Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are working on, I don't even remember, this old Murray Select. It's got a 13 and a half force, industrial, commercial, overhead valve, Briggs and Stratton. When it came to me, it pretty much was not in running condition. Um, it actually came to me the guy had it sitting for a while because the key wouldn't turn off the motor. He gave up on it. Then he decided he wanted to put a new belt on because the belt for the deck got shredded. We weren't sure what was going on. It kicked over. It started. It didn't run well. Ordered a brand new carburetor. Put the carburetor on. Ran it for, I don't know, about 45 minutes. And it started spittering and sputtering and popping and backfiring. Um... So I'm going to show you what that sounds like now. Now, I don't know if you can pick that up on the camera. And uh, I switched the spark plug, put a brand new spark plug in it. And it sputtered and popped worse. Um... It seems to be an intermittent kind of a problem and I've pretty much adjusted the carburetor in every general direction uh, air intake fuel intake there's two adjustment jets on the carburetor and you get it to the point where you can throttle it up and down and then it backfires and pops a lot if you get the idle up to enough to get rid of the backfiring and the popping then you can't idle the engine down and idle it back up so my guess, or at least the next thing to check on a machine like this, is gonna be to pull the head and check the valves. Oftentimes, especially on these older motors, uh, Briggs uh, are, are pretty well known for it. The, uh, the, the valves need to be adjusted. I tell people if you're working on your own stuff, you should probably, every spring when you do your spring cleaning, when you change the oil, check your spark plugs clean your carburetors, give it a good once over tune up, that you should always pop the valve cover and check to make sure that your valves are adjusted correctly. Um, I'm hoping that's the issue. The guy actually, I, I messaged him yesterday, told him he could come pick it up. When I went to test it today before he got here, he was on his way. I always start the engine, no matter what it is, and uh, make sure everything's okay before I send it home and it started popping and backfiring. So he actually showed up, I showed him what was going on, drove it around, and told him he couldn't have it. If I do a job, uh, I'm giving a warranty on it, I'm not gonna send something home that's half-assed, and then they're gonna have to bring it back anyway. So he borrowed a trailer to come pick it up, and I had to send him home. So that's just the way I do business. I'm not gonna send something to somebody that's not right. It runs and drives, I, I cut the grass in front of them. But if it's not running right, I'm not sending it home. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take off the hood. And this is not a lift off, this is the old style. We actually have to take a bolt out on each side. So I'm gonna take this hood off and we're gonna pull the valve covers and check the valves. As soon as I get this off, I'll be back with you in a minute. All right, guys. Look at that. The snap of a finger. I love cameras. It may look crazy, but I'm sure that this is not the first video you've seen on this problem. So you've seen this done already a hundred times. I pulled the spark plug out. The reason for that is not because I'm worried about the electrical issues or anything like that. It's so that when I spin the motor, it will spin by hand. If you leave the spark plug in, it'll be too much compression and you won't be able to turn it. What we're looking for is to see if the valves are doing what they're supposed to do. Second, I pulled the valve cover. It's just a cover that goes on here. This one happens to have a rubber gasket, which is nice. And it's got four bolts. Boom, 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 boom. Just goes in. It happens to be 10 millimeter bolts. You take out those four bolts, there's a little bit of oil it's going to drip out. I'm outside in my little work area, so no big deal. You might want to put down a towel or something like that to catch the oil. So I pulled this off, off camera. A, you've seen it before. And B, sometimes they use um, 
like a sealant and then this is stuck to this and you end up having to spend 15 minutes with a hammer and a screwdriver or a chisel trying to get this cover off without putting too much torque on it and bending the cover do not bend these covers they have a rail on them so they're stronger but if you get up in there with a screwdriver and you put too much pressure on there you'll bend that thing out and it will never seal again never no matter how much uh, gasket material silicone that you put in there it will never seal again so I took my time did it off camera I got lucky this one popped right off and I pulled out my handy dandy feelers gauge now on this single overhead you have your exhaust valve on the top and your intake on the bottom if you're not sure which is which in most circumstances the uh, the intake connecting rod right here is going to be made out of aluminum the exhaust is going to be made out of steel the reason for that is they say the exhaust is hotter so they make it out of steel so it doesn't get soft and bend I don't understand how the difference between an inch and a half away from each other and the fact that this whole head carries an explosion of gas thousands of times every minute I don't understand how this one stays cooler but I didn't design a thing so anyway what we have is an intake and an exhaust now as Terrell would say we're not working on the space shuttle here guys so let me check make sure this thing's still filming so what we have spec wise on this thing is they say the intake is supposed to be between four and six hundred thousands and the exhaust is supposed to be between five and seven now because of those numbers and because you have to come in here and adjust these valves you know fairly often I tend to stick with about five hundreds okay now you'll see a lot of videos where guys will say I take a screwdriver and I stick it into the spark plug hole and then I turn the wheel until I find top dead center there's two problems with that one this flywheel is 10 inches around 10 inches across okay the difference between a sixteenth of an inch in spin is going to set your timing completely off so using the old method of stick a screwdriver down the spark plug hole and find top dead center to me was always ridiculous because what you're doing is going back and forth and trying to figure out where the screwdriver's out the most and you're always going to be off by a sixteenth or more that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen so trying to set your timing is stupid in my opinion take that for what you want so I'm not doing that what I am gonna do is this is an alternating system anybody that knows what a carbur uh, what a, a crankshaft is the crankshaft pushes one out while it takes pressure off the other and they alternate so when I spin this if I know that my bottom one is tight okay then I know that all the pressure is off the top one and all we're doing is looking for setting these clearances when there's no pressure on them whatsoever bottom one is pushed in so it's tight right now this uh, this connecting rod is pushing this end out and pushing this end of the rocker in and compressing this spring if that's happening I know that there is nothing on here there's no tension whatsoever so this is supposed to be uh, between five and seven I, I stick with around five on both I go five and five uh, it gives you a pretty good idea what you're doing do not take my word for it if you do not want to go by the exact specs if you like again between four and six and between five and seven which means between four and six is five that's halfway and between five and seven is five it's still the lower side so I've got my 500s here and if I go in here I've got tons of friggin room okay that's supposed to be tight in there and it's not I'm actually supposed to be able to put that in there and it should hold it up but it sure as hell doesn't now whenever that happens I tend to try to go bigger so let's go with ten thousands twice the space that it's supposed to have it's supposed to have five thousands 
and I can fit a ten thousandths in there perfectly. No problem. It won't even hold it. Okay, hang on. Let's turn it around because I had to zip tie mine together because the stupid things kept falling apart. But here we go. It doesn't even hold ten thousandths. Let's try twelve thousandths. Let's see what we got here in the magic bag. And again, I make my videos for my customers, so if you don't like it, you can fast forward. I'm not begging you to stay. 9, 10, 11. Let's try 12 thousands. Let's see if 12 will go in there. Bingo. 12 goes in there. It's not even hardly dragging. Goes right in there. Let's go bigger. Let's go 13. 13 still going in there still won't hold let's try 15 now we are at three times the distance oh 15 finally 15's going in there will it hold I don't know nope still won't hold let's see 16 16 still going in there Let's go to 20. 20 still, no, 20's not going in. Okay. Finally getting somewhere. 19 won't go in. How about 18? There it is. It's at 18 thousandths. I'm trying to set it at five, and we've got 18 thousandths in there. That is more than three times. Even if you went six, if you went between five and seven and went six, six times three is 18. There is three times the amount of space of clearance in between this rocker arm and this exhaust valve as they're supposed to be. So the chances are the fact that this thing is spitting and backfiring is right there in our valves. So I'm going to turn this and I'm going to check the lower one. We're going to take the pressure off of the intake and we're going to put it on the exhaust. go now that one's in and that one's good and tight again between four and six I always do five now usually it's the exhaust valve that gets loose not the intake and I don't know why let me make sure we're still filming here yeah we're still filming sorry about that let's just go this is four thousands five thousands where I like to set it Five thousands goes in with plenty of room. Let's just go a little bit larger this time. We'll go to ten thousands. Ten thousands not going in. Let's try seven. Seven goes in, no problem. Eight, no problem. Nine. All right, so it's it's between nine and well, that's ten. Oh, I'm reading the bottom one anyway, so that's eight. I'm reading the wrong number, people. Why didn't you tell me? All right, so it's set at about eight. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and adjust these real quick. If you've never seen it before, it's only gonna take a minute. If you have seen it before, you can fast forward if you want to to the end of the video I'm going to show you if it's running better or not when we're finished so you want to loosen these the wrench this is a 10 millimeter the wrench holds this locking nut in place right here just holds the nut you're actually backing out your star drive once you get that loose then you can turn the whole thing take the ratchet off once you get that loose, you can turn the whole, oops, I'm working on the wrong one here, silly boy. I forgot. This is the one we're looking at. That's not going to hurt anything. But you got to work on the one that there's no pressure on so you can set it. And it's pretty simple. Just back out your star drive nut pretty good. Not, all, not a lot or the whole thing will fall off. Okay, 
I hate that stupid plug wire. It is always in the way of something. Now we're just going to tighten this in until it pretty much holds. Oops, see how it's holding? Make sure we're still on five. What we want is to be able to get that in there and still be able to move it, but at that it almost holds it in place. See how it holds it in place? Now, I'm gonna put this back on the ratchet. Turn the ratchet so it's going back in. We're gonna put our lock nut or lock wrench back on there and we're gonna hold the backing nut in place. And we're gonna turn the inner one until it's tight. And then we're gonna tighten it while holding that backing nut. Okay, now. I'm going to double check it. We got our five. We're good. It feels just about tight. It's going in, it's going through, and it's enough to hold it. So now we're at five thousands where we're supposed to be. Now I'm going to turn the flywheel. And now our pressure's down on the intake. And I'm going to do the same thing with the exhaust. Remember, this is the one that was way off three times where it was supposed to be. More than three times. Okay, that one was already loosened. Always check this every time you put it down because these things are so thin, they can change on you, you grab the wrong one. Now I'm just tightening that up till it barely touches and holds. Then I'm going to hold my backing nut, my lock nut. I'm going to tighten that in. Don't worry about that falling out. That's what we want. We want it to hold, just about hold, and still let it fall out. See how they closed up on me? So let's find our five thousands, four thousand. 5,000. Now I never use anything lower than a 4, so I, I pulled all the ones out of the way, and I always start at 4. So that's about perfect. It's holding it in place. Now I need to tighten it. Remember, this is what's important. This is what actually loosens and tightens the rocker. The star nut is what locks the locking nut in place. So be careful not to turn that when you're putting your wrench on it. And once you get it on, you tighten the star while that stays in place. Now we're good. And adjusting your valves is just that easy. So I have the right amount of space, 500s. Remember, this is supposed to be between five and seven. We're in there at five and it's holding it. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put all this back together. I'll let you watch that if you want because it's only gonna take a minute. Basically, I'm just gonna put this back on. Now, not permanently because I have to take this gasket, make sure it's clean. I'm gonna put a little bit of silicone on there and put it back in place. The valve cover itself says OHV printed, stamped on it, boom. It doesn't matter if you put it on upside down, it's just a valve cover. It just catches oil when it splashes up on the rocker arms. But they usually are printed on there. So just for aesthetic purposes, I'll make sure that that's readable Briggs and Stratton OHV. Just because I'm a mechanic and people look at me and go, 
did you do that right? I mean, you put the cover on upside down, so did you even put the thing together correctly? So I'm just going to give this a light tight. It's on. It's in place. I'm not worried about a little bit of oil leak or anything like that. And we're going to back you up and start this thing and see if it sounds better. That's what we're going to do. Sorry, I'm fixing the tripod. All right. Now, let's just see if it sounds any better. If not, then we got to look for something else. It might help if I put the spark plug back in. Why didn't you remind me? Why didn't you tell me I didn't put the spark plug back in? Where did I even put the spark plug? Start without a spark plug, people. I don't hear nobody yelling through the TV. Hey, dumbass, you didn't put the spark plug back in. It scared me there for a second when I hit the key and she didn't pop right off. Because once I put the new carburetor on, this thing starts almost instantly. And when it didn't start, I thought, oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Give it a light tight. Spark plug wire back on. There it is. Tools out of the way. And let's see if it sounds any better. I just want it to stop popping and backfiring. friends is how you do it no backfiring okay at low idle and this thing is old this thing is 30 years old at low idle it backfired a little tiny bit there are two adjustments on the carburetor for me to fix that and I'm gonna tweak those just a little bit I'm gonna back the air mixture off and I'm gonna put up on the throttle screw and I'm gonna float that back and forth until I get it perfect but she's not backfiring, she's not vibrating, she's not spitting, she's not losing power, she's running great and sounds so much better. Those valves were way, way out, three times out. I put them at five, it was at 18. That's three times as far as it was supposed to be. The valves were out of adjustment. So, this is for my customer. I'm gonna go inside and edit this. I'm gonna send him the link for this video. I'm gonna take a break. I'm gonna adjust the carburetor, tweak it a little bit back and forth, make sure we got full power, and he can come pick this thing up. So I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching.